Hey everyone, this is Michelle from the Thumbs of STEM podcast. And this is Will with Common Descent. And I am David, also from Common Descent. And we're here to present the super duper extra special bonus content episode for you guys that we were alluding to in the very last Common Descent podcast episode. And for those of you that are just tuning in without having listened to that one, let me tell you what it's about. So we wanted to talk to our colleagues about paleontologists and diversity in STEM. David recently attended SVP, which is the Society of Vertebrate Paleontologists Conference. So we had three questions that we wanted to ask everyone. Basically, who is a paleontologist that you admire, who also happens to be a woman? Why is diversity important in paleontology? And why is it important to talk about diversity in paleontology? We kind of talked about these issues in the last episode, but of course, we don't speak for everyone else. We don't speak for all of our colleagues. So this is an episode where you get to hear people talk for themselves. Yeah, and it was a cool idea to open up the discussion to other paleontologists at SVP and give them a chance to give their story or their side of the discussion. Once again, David was the one who took the interviews, but it was we have some really cool stories in here and some really cool discussions. And it's important because, as we said at the beginning of the last episode, everyone has their own story and their own slight different experience or similar but unique experience for their life in the field. Yeah, so just to give our listeners a heads up about what you're about to hear, this is 16 paleontologists selected from around the SVP conference. These are largely unedited, mostly raw footage. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear the sounds of the conference in the background. We haven't edited out any of their words, so you're going to hear a lot of ums and a lot of pauses and a lot of them thinking because these were answers that that these people gave right off the top of their heads. This is authentic discussion, so we've left it exactly like that. So excuse any ums and stumblings that that they come across while they're sharing their thoughts. (laughs) The ability to go around and talk to all these people at SVP was an incredible experience for me, especially since I've never really thought about these sort of, and never really talked about these sort of issues before. And I was telling Michelle and Will earlier that on the plane ride home from SVP, I was sitting in the middle seat, cramped in between two other people, (laughs) listening over these interviews that I had taken and wondering if the people on the plane thought that I was crazy because I was just sitting there tearing up, listening to these (laughs) heartfelt professions of people's experience and opinions. So Mm -hmm. without further ado, we're going to turn it over to the interviews and we hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Taramina Lapori, and I'm a research associate and educator at the Webb Schools and the Raymond M. Alf Museum in Claremont, California. And the question posed to me here is, um, why is diversity in STEM or diversity in paleontology such an important issue to talk about, to think about? And uh, to me, diversity in paleontology can encompass so many things. It can encompass um, including more people of color into the conversation um, on careers in paleontology. It can include people who identify as LGBTQ into that conversation, um, increasing equity for women in paleontology, and, uh, and so much more. So if we don't have these discussions, then as a society, as professionals, and as human beings, we cannot move forward with uh, a more uh, inclusive environment for uh, our work and life parameters. So if we want to make sure we have the best work-life balance we possibly can, and on top of that, have the best um, professional support we can possibly provide, then including diversity in paleontology into the conversation and not being afraid of shying away from um, having open and frank discussions about inequities um, or about the support that we do have, um, we need to make sure that those conversations are on the table. So it's so important to not hide behind a smoke screen or um, just be uh, cautious about talking about issues that are important to us because it's the only way that we as human beings and as professionals can move forward and support one another. 
Hi, I'm Brittany Stoneberg. I am the marketing and events specialist for the Western Science Center, which is a small natural history museum in Southern California. And I think we need diversity in STEM and paleontology in particular is because it brings a variety of viewpoints to the field. Um, I know I personally, as a woman in paleontology and as somebody who didn't take a um, a usual route to paleontology. I actually graduated in college with a humanities degree and now I work in paleontology and so I didn't take the usual route to get to this field and meeting other people, meeting other women, meeting other paleontologists who have had similar experiences tells me that I have a place here, that I can contribute to this field while not being what people would usually think of as somebody who works in paleontology and I think that's very valuable and I hope that um, as diversity increases in the field, more people will feel comfortable to pursue their passions in paleontology and in STEM in general. Hi, my name is Gabe Santos. I'm the collections manager for the Raymond Alf Museum in Claremont, California. Diversity in STEM and paleo in particular is really important to me because, you know, being a Filipino person, um, being someone who identifies LGBT, uh, diversity is so important because we need people we can look up to and it's not just the same people over and over. I'm really lucky in that one of my very first mentors and one of the people that I truly admire is uh, my first boss. Uh, her name is Meredith Ribbon. She is now the collections manager for the Burke Museum. And I admire her so much because she taught me what it means to be a collections manager, what it means for science, and also a little bit about science communication. Uh, when I first got into paleo, I was this ki new kid out of nowhere. I just decided to become a paleontologist, and I came, I emailed her, I'm like, hi, you know, I'm new, I want to be a volunteer. And she's like, okay, come in. So I came in, and she interviewed me, and she said, you'll do great, when do you want to come in? And me being me, is like, can I come in every day? And Meredith gave me the opportunity. She let me come in every day, and she really took me under her wing and taught me so many things. And if it wasn't for her, I mean, it's because of her, that I now have my job as a collections manager at the Raymond Alf Museum, and it's my dream job. And because I have someone, I had someone like Mer I have someone like Meredith. She's still a good friend of mine. Um, I was able to succeed because she mentored me so well. And you know, it's a it was a cool dynamic between her and I. You know, I sat right next to her in her office, and whenever something came up, she would take the time to explain to me the, all the details of it. She taught me about some science and you know she wasn't my only mentor I have my advisor who I greatly thank and my boss now but she was the first person who really gave me my chance in paleo and someone like me you know a, someone who wasn't always wanted to be a paleontologist from as a kid someone who is not what who doesn't look like what a traditional paleontologist looks like you know I'm not a white guy um, you know I don't talk like a scientist a lot I talk like a Californian and she saw me and she saw something and she gave me that chance and so it's really cool that one of my first advice, one of my first mentors is this amazing woman. And so because of everything she taught me, um, I want to be an amazing mentor and make sure that people have their opportunity. And so um, because of someone like her, I really want to keep doing more things for diversity in STEM and women in paleontology, women in STEM, and just keep making sure everybody has their chance. My name is Jessica Theodore. I'm an associate professor of biological sciences at the University of Calgary. I teach vertebrate paleontology and all things with backbones on campus. And I think that uh, it's really critical that we address issues of diversity in STEM and in paleo particularly because when we neglect women's ideas and voices and the voices of people of color, we're excluding a huge number of minds from the problems that we have to solve. And given the challenges that humanity faces with respect to climate change and various other STEM problems, it's really important that we have all of the minds that want to be working on this working on it. We do better, the studies have shown, we do better work when we work with diverse groups. Um, the more diversity, the better the outcomes, the better the science. And paleontology is the gateway drug to science for so many kids, and if we tell those kids this science isn't for you, then we're telling them science isn't for them. And that's not okay. We need those ideas to help solve human problems. So my name is Ashley Moorhart, and I'm an assistant professor of anatomy at Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, I'm also a paleontologist, and I'm here at 
uh, the Society for Vertebrate Paleontology annual meeting. Um, and as part of that meeting, I am interested in um, promoting and being part of efforts that promote diversity. I think diversity is extremely important because I think that um, any field, but especially paleontology, which is near and dear to my heart, benefits from a diverse set of viewpoints and a diverse set of backgrounds. I think that the more we know about each other and the more accepting we are of one another and the more we celebrate each other's strengths um, and, and sort of work together to use those strengths, the more productive and um, more prolific our field can be. Um, and uh, specifically, uh, while at the meeting, uh, I worked as a co-organizer with Rebecca Hunt Foster and Catherine Early uh, to put together the Women in Paleontology Luncheon as part of the more universal diversity efforts that are going on within the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology to promote these diverse viewpoints and be as welcoming as we can be to a wide variety of um, paleontologists around the world. And so. Uh, the Women in Paleontology event uh, is something that sort of celebrates and also uh, addresses challenges that face a subset of paleontologists who are female identifying. So we um, work to maintain um, a, a community of people who is, uh, are not necessarily heteronormative. Um, we want to be welcoming and accepting and as diverse as possible within our own group as well. Um, but we recognize that the literature, um, both within our own membership, uh, from the membership data that we have for SVP, and uh, the wider data sets available about women in STEM, show that there are unique um, challenges facing women that have specific and productive solutions that can be shared. Uh, and we want to share those solutions with people, educate them about the problems, uh, that are identified within the data. For instance, in um, uh, for the last Women in Paleontology social event last year uh, in 2016, we had two members um, present data that showed that uh, we apparently do have a leaky pipeline, which means that we have a, a large number of women who start paleontology careers, either as students or as amateurs, and come to SVP as uh, young junior members, um, but then apparently are not um, being retained, which is disappointing because we, we want to include them and we want the, them to be able to share their strengths and talents with the society um, and make meaningful contributions. And so um, our focus is to celebrate women in paleontology, but also to make sure that uh, whatever uh, cultural or career barriers might be standing in the way are lifted and to make sure that they have an equal opportunity to the um, really exciting and important uh, opportunities within paleontology. Hi, uh, my name is Selena. I'm a non-binary scientist and PhD student working in crocodile evolution at the moment. And I think diversity in paleobiology is really, really important because many people don't think paleobiology can be that diverse. So I've talked a lot to younger people, especially young girls, who say, oh, I've never actually seen a person who's not a man being a paleontologist. I was like, yeah, we, we do exist. Like, I'm non-binary. I have lots of female friends who are paleontologists. And suddenly they're like, oh my god, we can be paleontologists too. And I think that's the best way to create diversity in a subject is to actually be there, be out, be proud, and serve as an example for people, more or less. Hey there, I'm Taya Boudou. I'm a director at the Institute for the Study of Mongolian Dinosaurs here at SVP 2017. And I'm going to talk to you about why it's important to talk about diversity. So a little bit of a backstory, because I come from a different place than most people here. I started out in tech, so I've been working in um, advertising, digital advertising agencies, and tech, tech startups, mostly in Silicon Valley in San Francisco for about the past 10 years. And I got to tell you, when I came to my first SVP about um, it was 2013, I was actually really blown away by the um, gender ratio. I was like, wow, this looks really good. I was surprised at how many women were here. Um, ethnically diverse, not so much, but I was really surprised at how many women were here. Um, so in my workplace, I've often been 
one of very few women on the creative side in my department, or uh, occasionally the only woman in the creative department. And so it's a very different story. And in I don't know if any of you are going to be following like the tech blogs or the tech news at all, but the gender conversation there has gotten super weird. And there's really, really strong feelings on both sides. And that conversation's been happening quite a bit longer, I think, um, on the public stage than the one in paleontology has. So it's had a chance to bring in a lot of outside voices, and there's just a much bigger peanut gallery. So I can't say if that's ever going to happen in paleontology. I hope not. I don't think so, because this is a small community. Everyone knows each other. I don't see it getting really nasty. And we do have a much better gender ratio here. So there's a much, if it did, it would be shut down really fast. So why it's important to talk about that, um, when people in technology have, when women have been speaking up about it and about the negative aspects, there's been some real negative drawbacks for them, including like creepy online stalking and insane threats and just barrages of craziness on the internet. So it can get really, really bad if you, if you speak up as a woman about some of the problems. Um, but that really shouldn't stop you because there's, there's of course the threat of it's just staying how it is now, where there are real problems. And in paleontology, I, I haven't worked so much in the, in the academic side of this field. I've heard some stories. I've done a little bit of field work and have heard, like, you know, a comment here or there. Um, it's not so bad. But there is a threat, if you don't say anything, of it just continuing and people having to starting to feel really isolated if they do experience something negative. And if you never hear anybody else's story about how something or other they had an experience, if it only happens to you, you start to feel isolated and withdrawn and it might even result in you leaving the field, especially if you're early career. And that's the people who often get harassed the most, I think. I don't have data for this, but I've heard just the stories that I've heard, I feel like when you're early career and you don't already have like a big network, you're, people are going to maybe take advantage of you a little bit more. And if you don't know that, hey, this is a common issue, like here's what you can do about it, here's what someone else did about it, here's what the experience was that's shared among many people. And also if the people, if the people on the other side who maybe don't realize that they're hurting somebody, if they hear this story and hear that somebody was hurt by this kind of thing, they may start to check themselves more or check each other more. So talking about it's way more important than not talking about it. And if something does happen, like talk to somebody at least. Don't just like shrink away and let that defeat you. Hi, my name is Evan Johnson Ransom. I am an undergraduate student at DePaul University, majoring in biology, concentrating in evolution and ecology. So why? So the reason why I think diversity is important in STEM and paleo is because you want to expose minorities in the field as possible because they don't see a lot of people of color in the media a lot. Now, I volunteer at the Field Museum as a docent for Pseudotyrannosaurus, and the one thing that makes me smile the most is seeing minority kids, as well as, minor as, well as minority parents, seeing a, seeing a young black male talking about a dinosaur, as well as having interest in going into the field of science and STEM. And it really makes me, along with them, smile that they can see a minority or, or, a, or a person of color doing something that they love and enjoy, as well as, as, well as continuing down the path of science and paleontology. Hi, my name is Amy Atwater. I am a PhD student at University of Texas at Austin, where I study primate evolution, early primate evolution, the cool, cute ones, not the human-like ones. Um, but for this, uh, a paleontologist who I admire a whole heck of a lot is the Utah BLM paleontologist Rebecca Hunt Foster. Uh, she works out of Moab, Utah, which is one of the most gorgeous, amazing, scenic places on Earth, and it also has this treasure trove of paleontological resources, which means she has a busy job. There's lots of stuff for her to oversee and a lot of fossils for her to protect, but I think she does an incredible job at 
being an, a great paleontologist. She publishes, she presents her research here at SVP all the time. And not only is she doing original research and protecting fossil resources, but she's also a huge advocate for uh, better paleo education and getting more women involved in paleontology and diversity in paleontology. And also for people who struggle with mental illness or learning disabilities that are challenging in paleontology and she has talked about that which is really helpful for me someone who struggles with mental illness to have an advocate who has a job who is successful in paleontology who also is open about struggling with learning disabilities so to me that is admirable and awesome and she is so friendly and amazing and I'd never met her in person but I had friends with her on Instagram and I drove through Moab and I knocked on her door at the BLM office and she took a ton of time to meet with me and talk to me and get involved so that was incredible that she just dropped everything to make time for someone a nerd like me who wanted to geek out with her so for all of those reasons and many more the fact that she has a beautiful family as well and can do this work-life balance that's my dream. My dream is to you know, be healthy, work-life balance, and be working in an amazing place doing paleontology. So that's why I just respect the heck out of Rebecca. So my name's Rebecca Hunt Foster, and I am a paleontologist in southeastern Utah. And I think that there's a real need for diversity in, um, in paleontology, specifically in, in STEM fields in general, because there's just not a lot. It's getting better though. There's so much, there's such a greater diversity of people, especially attending meetings like the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology than there have ever been. I see all sorts of wonderful people at these meetings that I haven't had a chance to meet or we're just seeing, you know, more folks, younger folks, folks from all walks of life. We have people that are from all sorts of different career paths. So we have non-traditional career paths. We don't have just academic paths. We have people that are doing mitigation, paleontology, preparation, um, lab work, government work. All of these things are really important, and we need to have a better realization that there's more than one good career path to choose. There's many different things you can choose, and no one career path is right for everyone. So that's a, a great way to increase diversity and bring more people into the workforce. And then also just remembering that there's a lot of different people out there who have gone through different experiences and come from different backgrounds that can bring things to the table and they may think differently, whether that's through um, something that they've grown up differently, um, challenges that they may have faced, or things that they've learned that make things easier for them, or even folks with disabilities can teach us how to do things in better ways or more efficiently. Uh, my name is Kat Schroeder. I am a uh, paleo macroecologist. Uh, I'm a PhD student from the University of New Mexico. Uh, I study community dynamics and uh, ontogeny in tyrannosaurs. Um, and I think uh, diversity in STEM um, and STEM paleo is particularly a subject that we should be talking about because there's a lot of people that um, have interesting ideas and a lot of those people might be deterred by the sheer number of old white dudes that they tend to see in paleo. Um, and honestly, when I was growing up, uh, I always wanted to be a paleontologist. I remember being a really small kid um, and loving watching people like Jack Horner and Robert Bacher. And these are two old white dudes in paleo. And you see a lot of kind of the same, um, which is not necessarily a problem, but it's a holdover from how science has been for the last couple hundred years. Um, and I think it's it's not a coincidence that for the past couple hu couple hundred years in vertebrate paleontology, we've been really, really focused on doing kind of the same thing over and over and over again, which is going out into the badlands, finding something cool, and naming it, which is a great thing to do. We need to know the, the kind of biodiversity in dinosaurs, um, but it's missing a lot of really interesting stuff that, that we can study. Um, and when you have people that are looking into this field that are going, well, I don't really see myself there. I don't see a lot of people that look like me. I mean, I'm, I'm 28. I've got tattoos. Uh, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't look like most paleontologists. Um, and I, I don't think like most paleontologists. I, I, I mean, I don't think I think like most paleontologists. Um, and it, it takes a, a certain amount of willpower to be able to sit um, with people that have been doing uh, research in your field for 
20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and they're they're well known. I mean, they they get you know just random people coming up to them all the time, asking them questions. It's hard to sit there and and go, well, you know, this is my idea, and I think this is a cool idea. Um, there's a lot of pushback, um, and I think it's 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 just that holdover from from you know time past when we studied it this way, and this is how it's always been done, and we're it's the status quo, and we're not going to change that. And I think the more that we can talk about diversity in STEM, diversity in paleo, the more people like me will understand that there, there are women. There are, I'm, I'm part of the LGBTQ community. Um, we are out there. We exist. Um, and I think a lot of people, a lot of students will find that if they don't necessarily approach the old white dudes, if they, if they approach the people that they see that, you know, you're a woman, you're black, you're... Um, you're queer, you're gay. Um, if you if you approach those people that you think you um, see yourself more in, you might find that people are thinking in weird ways, and it's it's a great thing to discuss. So uh, my name is Dr. Melissa Party. I have an undergraduate and master's degree in geosciences and a PhD in biology. And uh, I was asked, what is or why is uh, diversity in STEM so important? And I think. One of the reasons diversity in STEM is so important is because that's where diversity of ideas come from. And really what science is all about is answering the unknown. And so the best way to do that is to get new ideas. And the best way to do that is to have different brains and a lot of different types of brains to come up with those answers. Uh, the other reason that I think diversity in STEM is really important is because uh, is there's a self-fulfilling prophecy within the sciences. A lot of times uh, the way people find their academic advisors or their postdoctoral advisors or the people that are really going to help them find a job is through networking. And so you need that diversity in place to help attract more diversity. And that's why I think it's so important. So I'm Mary Schweitzer. I'm a full professor at North Carolina State University and I'm an affiliate at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And probably one of, the, one of, one of my heroes is Karen Chin. And I was a volunteer at the Museum of the Rockies preparing MOR555, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And Karen Chin worked as Jack's, Jack Horner's uh, lab manager. And to me, she was, boy, everything I wasn't. She was poised and confident and smart and she um, dedicated, meticulous, and she was a really good dancer and she was very ambitious and energetic about all kinds of things. And she was just, she was beautiful. And I just thought, man, if I could be her, if I could be, if I could be like that, comfortable in my own skin, talking to people, she just, and I also really liked it that Karen brought a totally new perspective to paleontology. She made a niche for herself um, with her humor and what she researched. I mean, who couldn't resist somebody who studies dinosaur poop? But she took something that nobody else had ever thought of and made it into a really valid, important way of understanding the ecosystem of dinosaurs. And that was just, I mean, that took a lot of courage, a lot of innovativeness, and she just was one of my heroes. Hi, my name is Ann Weil. I'm an associate professor at Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences in the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. Um, and one of the things that we really work on at Oklahoma State is inclusivity. Um, we really want to have I think paleontology wants to have the, the really the best people, the best researchers. And it's statistically likely that, of course, those people who are really smart and motivated and creative are scattered throughout all cultures and all populations of people. But not everybody knows that paleontology is an amazing field, and not everybody knows that it's something that is accessible to them, that they could do, that they would be welcome in that community. And um, part of our job is to really communicate to people that there are possibilities for them and give them some um, opportunities to work in the lab and work in the field and, and get excited about you know dinosaurs and mammals and things like that coming out of the rock 
Um, and also to say, hey, you know, we're we're regular people and we have this job. It's not really, it's no longer a field dominated by the gentleman naturalist. It's not a job that you can't have if you aren't already rich. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a pretty rural area and um, didn't know until I was in college that you could actually just have a real job as a geologist even. Um, and so I think that that is a big point to communicate to people that they could do this. It's, it's a possibility for them. They would be welcome doing this. And in many cases, it is something that they can bring back to their communities. Um, we, we encourage participation uh, by Native Americans, which is a huge population of, in Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, they have native lands that are, you know, might be very rich in vertebrate fossils and that they can bring that knowledge back with them and they can encourage um, other people from their tribes to engage in research. And right now, Native Americans are very underrepresented in the STEM fields. Um, and so, we encourage them to participate not only in vertebrate paleontology, but to come to the medical school and to get medical training. Hi, I am Sana El Said from the Mansoura University Vertebrate Paleontology Center in Egypt. And I'm here to answer the question, which is, who is the person, non-male, that you admire most in paleontology? <laughs> well, there is not a specific person that I admire but I don't, uh, I admire all of the women who are working on this field and specifically vertebrate paleontology because it has, it is a field that has been so long a male only science. So seeing so much women today getting in this field is interesting. And as a female vertebrate paleontologist that came from a country with no women at all, in working in this field until until I started, I know how much obstacles women could face to work in vertebrate paleontology. And my deepest respect is to all of these earliest women who started this way, and we continued after them. Hi, I'm Tut Tran. I work on microfossils at the University of California, San Diego. And in terms of diversity in paleontology and at SVP, um, I feel very optimistic. And to contrast, um, growing up, I w grew up in communities where I felt alienated as one of the only Vietnamese American people in my immediate group. And people would harp on that a lot. Um, and working now as an adult in paleontology with paleontologists, I find that I don't feel as alienated because people look past the differences that um, others have to work on things that are bigger than all of us. And I find that's very cool. And I understand that um, paleontology and a lot of STEM fields still have to deal with internalized racism and misogyny. That's not going to be gone, and that's not going to be gone anytime soon. But seeing the response by people like David and like um, many other people, Gabe Santos, um, gives me hope to bring about awareness. And if we keep pushing like this, then we're going to really make progress. And it's important to keep talking about these things because we want to keep the flow of information and ideas open um, and to ignore these problems is to hinder that progress that we want to see in our field. Thank <laughs> you.